I'm going to show you how to do packet captures for wireless using a MacBook with Wireshark. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is uh, open Wireshark, obviously. Select your wireless adapter. Now go to the options, and under the wireless adapter, you see we have monitor mode. We have to make that enabled. If it's disabled, you're just going to get the frames that are actually going up the network stack for this device. But we want to see all wireless uh, frames on that channel. So make sure it's enabled. If you have to select enabled, like if it was disabled, on this version of Wireshark, you've got to restart it for it to actually take effect. So anyway, once that's enabled, we'll start that, and you see all this stuff coming in now. Now that's just any 802.11 frames from anywhere that this laptop can hear. It's not necessarily for this laptop, it's just whatever's on that channel. So if I come along with the phone, and I associate to the AP. Now I know it's going to be on the same channel because I've just got the one AP here. If I uh, turn that on, get that on the network, okay that's on the network. I'll stop this capture now and I, I just, I mean they've got all these packets here, I want to see just the ones from the phone. So what you want to do is just find something from the phone that you know of, like I know that's the MAC address of the phone, and you can type a display filter which is wlan.address equals and then the whole MAC address. But a quicker, easier way to do it is just find, find something down here in the uh, output that has that MAC address. Just right click on that and apply as filter selected. Now I went on a receive address so you can see it's called wireless LAN receive address. You can just edit that and go wireless LAN address and the MAC address. So now, using that display filter, we have all the frames to do with that phone, and only that phone. So you can see it started off with some probe requests, probe responses, authentication, authentication successful, uh, association, association response, all the EAP frames for my um, security, and then the four-way handshake, and then after that, all the data frames start flowing. So that's a basic, that's a very basic capture and filtering of just the phone. Now if you want to work on this later and you've captured a big file, let's say um, you've captured a file over a certain amount of time just waiting for a little bit of data that you need. Now you don't want to be messing around with this big file all the time because it takes a lot of processing power and time to load and mess with. So once, you get, once you've got the, the packets on the display filter that you're interested in, just save that out and then load it up again and you'll just have those frames. But um, that just saves you manipulating, let's say, a 100 meg file if you only need a few meg of it, you know. Um, some other tricks, if you want to look at um, certain things, like, depends what you're looking for, but let's say uh, we want to look at the speed of the frames. So we can go down here and we can click on the frame See, we, we see that one's 6 meg a second. Okay, but if I want to go to another frame, well, that one's 36, I go to one further down, uh, 6 again, go to a data frame, and it's, oh, what have we got? 270 meg. I mean, if you want to see that quick and easy without clicking on each frame, what you can do is you can make a column up the top here where you've got things like time, source, destination, info, all that. You can make your custom ones. So let's say we're interested in the data rate. You can just right click on that, apply as column, and then up here, we now have a column called data rate. And I can, as you saw, normally things are just ordered in time order, okay? And you see over here we have easily visible the data rates that went through the air then. Okay, and they're all varying and all that. By having that as a column, you can just click on the column title and, and sort them in order of hang on, that's not there. sort them in order lowest to highest, highest to lowest, or whatever you're interested in. Now you might not want to make new columns for everything, otherwise you'll just have lots of columns and it could get messy. But for things you use all the time, it's handy to have. But um, the display filters, if you're looking for something specific, uh, look, I don't know the display filters for most things. I know the common ones that I use, but you don't have to know them because you can just get it to figure them out for you. So let's say I'm just looking at a beacon frame here, and I'll, look, I'll just go into it and see, see what we've got here. 
Okay, you've got all sorts of things. Let's say I just want things from this transmitter address, which is obviously going to be the only one here. I can, instead of applying as a column, I can apply that as a filter. And it comes up with it for me. Wireless transmitter address is that MAC address. Okay, uh, something slightly more complicated. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, AES encryption. If the group cipher, now that, that's for multicast and broadcast, if, if that's AES, then show that in the filter. Okay, there you go. Now I would have never have guessed that filter name of wireless LAN management RSN GCS type equals equals 4. I wouldn't have guessed that, but you don't have to. If you want all the frames that contain that, just select it, apply as filter. So there's just a couple of simple things. You can capture with a MacBook pretty easily and you can work out the display filters easily and for things that you use all the time you can just make your own column and then you can sort and manipulate stuff and you can make multiple filters uh, you know ands and ors so we'll go for more through Wireshark as we do specific things later on but that's just the basics of how to get a capture and some simple filtering